nothing can be compared to Warmer Beach, as it was in those long lost days of yesteryear, with the quaint old black huts which were knocked up in the 1800s by the old fishermen from bits of wood taken from old shipwrecks and old boats that were beyond repair. These old sheds were then covered in old sails and heavily tarred to make them watertight. Dotted about all over the beach, the old huts were very picturesque and in much liking to their weather-beaten owners. The boatmen also built large white storehouses. Generally, these were much alike the gypsy caravan on the inside, with two compartments. This is where the boatmen stored their gear. Nets, deck chairs for letting out, and oars, etc. These huts were also a place where an afternoon was spent on a quiet day, quenching their thirst and talking to their mates about rescues. Boats of all sizes were stationed on the beach, including the luggers, which were mainly used to take anchors and chains out to ships when requested, or launched to the assistance of some poor vessel that had become stranded on the Goodwin Sands. The days of piloting had long since passed, but alas, steam tugs started to make an appearance and the luggers' job faded into history. The boats still on the beach in the late 1800s sat proudly on their stocks facing the sea, attached by a slip chain to a chain mooring or the capstan, ready to launch at a moment's notice from signals from a passing ship needing assistance, or from the boom of a gun fired from the lightships that used to guard the Goodwin Sands. Watching a boat launch was a sight for the keenest eye as she rushed over the greasy woods to the water and dashed into the sea, eager to be a part of the element where she belonged. After the demise of the lugger, the beach still had many catboats or third-class luggers stationed on it. These were mainly used for mackerel and herring fishing. There was also the elegant eight-oared galley and five-oared galley, galley punts and the smaller corgis as they were known. These were originally used as tenders for the large luggers. Also in the winter months there was the lifeboat, whose mission needs no explanation. The beach was strewn with old woods mops and scrubbing brushes, beach plows, bits of rope and old chains, and old chests which are to fishermen what a jewellery box is to a lady. Lots of old fish barrels and anchors and of course there was always plenty of nets strewn out on poles drying in the crisp sea air, a sight that will never be seen again. The capstan stood tall and proud like massive mushrooms along warmer green. The boatmen gathered alongside these to stare out to sea and have a good yarn, but you'd never find the boatmen's womenfolk around the area. The boatmen themselves were of a bronze colour, weather-beaten sons of the sea, and were much younger than their appearance showed them. At times when they launched to a job or to go fishing for hours, they would quite often return soaked, with no profit to show for their hard labours. Boatmen are often classed as a lazy lot that loaf around the beach all day. It was easy for the landlubber that lies in his warm bed and then gets up for breakfast and sits around a nice warm fire to criticise them. Fishing is mostly carried on at night when fish seem to be easier to catch. Boats and men are active during this time of day and much goes unnoticed. The old salts in those long ago days can never be replaced and the bustling activity on the beach with the numerous boats was a sight that could never be forgotten and sadly will never return. History that made warmer and times long since gone.